Good morning, good afternoon, or depending upon when you tune in, good evening. I'm Erica, and it's another day for my family here at our homestead. Though it's not a typical morning, while it's calm and peaceful here, I know that our modern day world is stressed and going through a big challenge right now. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of you who follow our journey. We've achieved over 10,000 subscribers. I've texted, emailed, and even spoken to so many of you. You give me the motivation to continue to share our journey. So take a break from the pervasive uncertainty and anxiety that's in our world today and share in a typical yet not typical morning with me and half our Carne Corso crew. I don't think the girls are happy with Dora. She was picking on Asha all night long, causing trouble. And uh, Kalia actually was really not having it. So we'll have to see how they respond to Dora this morning. You know you were being bad. That's why you're hanging back. Mm-hmm. Hey, Kalia. Mm-hmm, she's giving her the eyeball already. Look at her. Well, we'll see. Hi, Faduki. <laughs> Hi, Farouk. <laughs> Hi, Faduk. Hello, my love. Hello, my love. Hi, baby. Go play. <laughs> Farouk is eight months and he is, I think he's 120 now. Good boy. Good boy. Good morning, Kalia. Hey, Asha. Asada, what do you have now? She keeps finding random objects. Must we walk through the stream? Really? Really, Asada? That's Demi. Demi twisted her, her ankle a little bit, so I'm watching it to see if uh, it develops into anything. So she is not allowed to run and play right now while she's got a little limp until we can take a look at it. So you'll hear her in the background protesting. starting already. I can see them. Kalia never chases Dora like that. Yep. This ought to be interesting. Slobbing her up already. Yep. Kalia is probably like, you're not going to take my position. I wish I had recorded it, but um, Dora's really been asserting herself and it's escalating, so I could imagine that they're gonna try to set her straight. Even if it's just play, those are always still acts of, uh, you know, the, the hierarchical tussling that they do. Yeah, Demi's not happy. Yeah, I really like how Farouk is looking, his lines, his structure. He's definitely a Cayuse Jr.
Oh, you got slob on you, Dora. This way, Asha, Farouk, this way, this way. I bought the chicken coop, or not the chicken coop, but the run, and look at him. Sada's going to attack it. Something new. As soon as they see that, we brought that in late as it was thunderstorming and raining last night or yesterday evening, plopped it down because I got a notification that my, my small little chicken coop is coming, which is awesome because if it doesn't, the chickens are just going to jump out or they have been jumping out, but we're going to find them in the living room walking around if we don't hurry up. But this is the run area so i didn't receive the chicken coop that i had commissioned someone to build they they may have tried to you know take the half my deposit and run with it because i haven't heard from them i'll be um, doing a paypal dispute in the meantime i can't wait so because the chickens and the ducks are huge so i ordered a smaller one and uh got it's only like four by eight it's real small so I got this eight by eight run so they can go into the coop as well as go into the outside run and have enough space for now until we can regroup and uh, build a, a much bigger uh, space for them but I think it's gonna be nice that will work Life within the pack comes with a certain set of rules. Everyone knows there's position of authority or lack of authority. Those who don't have any authority may strive to one day get it, and so they test the pack leader. The leader, who must never show weakness, asserts his or her dominance when challenged. Rather than this creating an embarrassing situation for the submissive members of the pack, it gives them a sense of relief because they can see they are well taken care of by a strong leader and that their leader is willing and able to defend his position within the pack. When dogs live with humans, the human is the pack leader. The human is not only the source of safe shelter and food, but also the one who sets the rules and enforces them. Yet even then, dogs within a multi-dog household may need to occasionally correct each other. Dogs aren't like humans. They don't have lengthy talks after the fact. They simply correct errant behavior the moment it happens so that the other dog knows what it did wrong. <laughs> Consider that in the dog world, there is only submission and obedience. This doesn't mean that dogs don't have feelings, but if you were to eliminate one element from your world to think more like a dog, that element would be the question, why? Because dogs don't have a way to ask it. When you see one dog correct another, you might be tempted to feel bad for the submissive dog. You really shouldn't because it's unlikely that that submissive dog feels bad. He or she is just reacting with appropriate body language to let the dominant dog know that the correction is understood and accepted. But in Dora's case, I don't think the story is quite yet over. One thing to underscore though is don't mistake submission with weakness. Even the lowest ranking wolf is still a wolf. Well, this is the aftermath of me getting bowled over. It happens, it happens quite a bit, especially when I'm right in line of fire trying to get them on, you know, a recording and I don't watch it or they turn 
turn and uh, head my way. I can't get out fast enough and kaboom, I fall, fall right down. Luckily, I have good padding in the back. Never had a problem with that. So, <laughs> um, all is well and I'll live to see another day. But uh, yeah, these are the hazards of having, um, let's see, right now I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five hundred, probably over 600 pounds of Corso <laughs> at the moment. Double that when the others come. show you how big my ducks have gotten they're mammoth they're like t-rexes and I'm still waiting on my chicken coop but hopefully it'll come in the next week got delayed I'll tell you about that story in a bit but these guys are very personable and very opinionated Here you go. Ow, ow, wait. Oh, ow, Jesus. they like raisins what this is a um, sassafras What'd you say? Don't don't talk about my mother. And that's alfalfa. <laughs> See, sassafras steals raisins. It wasn't for you. Alfalfa, you had to get... Here, you eat that. Oh, damn it. Here. Jeez, you're greedy. And you're not paying attention. It looks like they're losing their baby... Baby fluff. And their adult feathers are coming in. I, I think. If any of you guys know anything about ducks, let me know. Because that's what seems to be happening. Here, you're missing out. You're like three raisins behind. Because sassafras. Here you go. There, you dropped it. Ducks are incredibly messy. I mean, they're sloppy. They have no regard for anything. Don't ever try to be neat around them. They're wet, sloppy messes, but I love them. They're cute. And while they're going through this whole change in feathers, I don't know about cute, and, but um, they have attitudes. I think this is enough. You shouldn't have too much more. Okay, one more for you. Ow, that's my finger. Is that good? Wash it down. 
Mm. Wash it down. And then the next minute, he'll put his whole butt in there. Time to get you guys out of this little thing. It's too small. You still chewing? So the chickens are, are big too. I'd say that they are officially teenagers. See my Isis? My Isis used to be those yellow chicks. It's that one right there. They're a lot more brown. Their feathers have come in brown. Now here's the question. And I really would love to hear everyone's opinion because I'm not really sure. Once my chicken coop comes in, how am I supposed to move them? Do I put them in a crate? Do I put them in boxes? They're bigger now. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do I have nine? I sure do. I have nine chickens and two ducks. So any advice would be appreciated. They're much bigger now. I mean, look at the size. Look at the size of this chicken. Look at the size of this chicken. Chickadee. Yeah, how am I supposed to move them? Um, I don't want to startle them. I don't want to stress them. But I honestly don't know of another way other than putting them in a box. Is that typically what we need to do? Let me know your thoughts, guys. Give me whatever advice you might have because I believe my chicken coop is on its way and I want to be prepared to move them in the best way possible that has the less stress for them. Thank you again for tuning in and following us on our journey. If you appreciated the video, leave us a like. Feel free to share your respectful thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.